Hey Bodybuilding.com, this is Rich Froning, two-time CrossFit Games champion, BSN athlete, Rogue Fitness athlete, and we're here at Rogue Fitness headquarters about to show you guys a workout. All right guys, the workout today we're gonna do is 15, 12, 9, 6, 3 of shoulder to overhead pull-ups and uh, 30 double unders in between each set. So the 15, 12, 9, 6, 3, you're actually gonna do 15 uh, shoulder to overhead and 15 pull-ups. Then you're gonna do your double unders. Then 12, 12, double unders, 9, 9, all the way down to three. Now before we do the workout, I'm gonna uh, bring Ben in. We're gonna show you actually how to do the movements and then also how to scale the movements. If you're not, you know, you can't do the exact weight we've prescribed or the exact movement, we'll show you a few different options to do this workout. All right, so the first movement we're gonna show you is the shoulder to overhead. Um, there's a few different variations you can actually do with this. You can do a shoulder press, a push press, or a push jerk. So I'm gonna show you all three options. Push jerk, you're gonna use, it's probably gonna be the most efficient, especially when it gets heavy, you're gonna use the most musculature. You can start with the bar on the ground, or you can start with it in the, in the rack. You Kind of up to you. What Ben's gonna do is his feet are gonna be right underneath his hips, uh, hands just outside the shoulders. So he's gonna, for this, he's gonna act like he's taking it from the ground. He's actually gonna clean it up, making sure he's got a good flat back. The bar's actually gonna rest here on his shoulders. His elbows are gonna be up slightly, but not too far up, not like he's in a front squat, down just a little bit, but they're not gonna be behind the bar because what happens with behind the bar, then you're pushing the bar out. We want this bar to go as straight up and down as possible. The whole time Ben is doing this movement, we're gonna start with the shoulder press, is with the shoulder press, he's just gonna press it up, he's gonna tuck his chin, shave his face, he's got good active shoulders at the top, he's gonna pull his rib cage down, good tight core, protect that spine, we've got good support all the way through the movement. Coming back down the same exact bar path, the more straight up and down we can go, the more efficient it is, the better it is, um, the safer it is. So from the shoulder press, we'll move to the push press. So now we're gonna add just a little bit of velocity. Um, you start getting tired out. You wanna you know, save, save your shoulders a little bit, use the legs. He's gonna just quick little, paw, or quick little dip of his knees. He's gonna drive it up using the momentum he gets from that dip from his hip. He's not actually, so bring it back down. He's actually gonna use that little drive he gets, a little momentum on the bar, and then just continue the press, just like the shoulder press, but he's just gonna add a little bit of dip with his knee, keeping his chest good and upright. What, one thing he's not gonna do is dip his chest forward, because then the bar's gonna go out once again. We wanna keep this bar over his center of mass the whole time if we can. It's safer, more efficient, easier. The final movement will be the push jerk. Basically the same, it's the same exact dip as the push press. It's the same press as the shoulder press. All he's gonna do is retreat just slightly under the bar and receive it when he goes to catch it. So go ahead and drive it up. He's caught it here. What he's gonna do to finish the movement though, he's gonna go ahead and stand all the way up. Every time we do the movement, we want locked knees, shoulders all the way up, torso good and tight bar all the way overhead. We don't want that bar too far back when we're overextending the shoulders. We don't want that bar out in front of us because that's, that's not a full rep. We want to make sure it's a full rep every time. You can bring it back down to his shoulders. He's going to do a few for you. Cycle him. If he does widen his feet out, he's going to bring his feet in. He's going to bring his feet in. There you go. In between reps. All right, so the next movement we're gonna show you is the pull-up. Everybody knows how to do a pull-up. Uh, the first variation will be a strict pull-up, just like the shoulder press. This is the, I guess, the dumbed down version. You just pull up, chin all the way over the bar, fully locked out at the bottom. Still has active shoulders at the bottom. He's not just letting himself fall down and letting those shoulders fall out of joint there. So he's still active here, but he's fully locked out at the bottom. Next, what we'll do is we will add a little bit of velocity to it, just a, a kipping pull-up. So he's actually, a lot of people get the, uh, the negative, oh, they're just flailing around on the pull-up bar. 
but we're the whole point of the, the kipping pull up is to increase the, the work done in short amount of, shorter amount of time. So what he's actually gonna do is it's not really a foot driven movement or a leg driven movement, it's more right here in the core. He's actually gonna go ahead and get a little swing and he's gonna kip himself up there. Chin still over the bar, shoulder still locked out, still active shoulder. That's a regular kipping pull up right there. So we'll move kind of like we did the shoulder press to the push press to the push jerk. He did a regular kip right there. The next is what they call the butterfly kip. Um, it's a little bit different of a kip and it's a little faster so you can get a little bit more work done even faster. So here's a, gym, or a butterfly kip. Chin still over the bar, still active shoulders, safe movement. Now if you have to, just like the, the shoulder press where you can take weight off, what you can do with the pull-up is you can either do it on a pull-up, uh, assisted pull-up machine. You can use a band, hook your foot in the band to assist you. You can do jumping pull-ups from a box. You can do inverted rows if you need to, for however challenging you want to make it. All right, the final movement of the workout, double unders. A lot of, a lot of people will hate these. Um, so there's a couple things. The rope's going to go around twice for every jump. One of the common faults that we see is a lot of people when their hands are out, go ahead and bring your hands out, what they'll do is they start bringing their hands out, which shortens the rope, so then you start busting yourself in the shins, okay? We wanna to try to keep those hands pretty close to you, slightly in front of you. Try not to go too far behind. Don't let them come up. You wanna to try to keep them just arms bent, relaxed. A lot of people get frustrated. They try to, it's, it turns into more of a painful experience than a, uh, a positive experience. So we're gonna have Ben do a couple double unders for you. It's more of a timing issue than anything. All right, so the way we can scale that movement is single unders. Um, a regular single jump, we'll see if Ben can do that. We don't do many singles often. For this particular workout, what we'll have you do is if you're gonna scale it to single unders, just double the single unders. So instead of doing 30, you're doing 60 singles. So Ben's gonna do, try to do a few single unders <laughs> as he looks like a little schoolgirl. Uh, so he's good. Another way you can scale this is you can also do plate jumps. You can get a little plate, just have the person jump up to the plate, or you can actually take the barbell, have per somebody do a lateral hop over the barbell. A few different options. If you can't do more than five or 10 double unders without whipping yourself or kicking the double unders, don't do double unders because you're kind of missing the point of the workout. You want it to be hard, you want it to be fast. All right, so now I'm gonna show you what this workout actually looks like. this workout really for anybody. Um, it's, a, it's a more of a pure CrossFit uh, workout, you know, it's a, a metabolic conditioning circuit, so it's, there's no s special group it was targeted towards, it's just an all around, just a good little workout. There's a push, a pull. As soon as the press starts to become an issue, you switch to a pulling movement. So then when the pulling movement becomes an issue, then it's the double unders. And then, you know, so it's, it's just a, a good keep you moving, good fast, quick little burner, nothing fancy, just, just get some work done. I was never a, you know, a show bodybuilder, but I mean, I did the bodybuilding type, the chest and back, but I try legs. I started doing CrossFit and then just kind of as a, a supplement type thing, and then just fell in love with it and haven't looked back since. One thirty-five for um, forty-five reps gets a little, little heavy. You know, it's not a strength. I wouldn't say it's going to help you with your strength. It'll help you a little bit muscular endurance. It's gonna help you uh, cardiovascular uh, endurance wise, help you with the grip. It's gonna help you with coordination. I mean, it's a lot of reps to get some practice on the movements. You know, like I said, once you start getting fatigued with the press, switch to a pull. Um, after the pull, the double under just, just gets you out of breath. You know, tax the forearms just a little bit, enough to make the pull-ups not as easy. So it's, it's a pretty good little you know, like I said, just keep you moving. No real breaks in there. The only break is the transition time, so.
the beauty of CrossFit is, you know, we say it's infinitely scalable, and it really is. We, we talked about how you could take each of the movements, the press, and you could back it down to however your, your skill level. You know, if you don't have the coordination to, to push jerk, just shoulder press. You know, you don't, you don't need that velocity on there. You're still getting the work done. You're still doing the movement. We're not really changing the movement. We're just, you know, adding a little bit of speed to it, you know, recruiting a little bit more musculature, doing that type of thing. Same thing with the pull-up and the double under. I mean, you could really take this down to, the, to a basic level to where anybody could literally do it, even if they have a shoulder issue. They could do it with a PVC pipe. They could do it with five-pound dumbbells, something like that. And that's what's great about CrossFit is anybody can do it. Yeah, so into this workout, um, probably five minutes under is probably your elite or, you know, those movements are good for you. It's a, a, a fast time. Um, five to seven minutes, maybe a little over seven minutes is, is real good. And then, you know, just kind of maybe two or three minute increments from there take you up. It kind of really depends too is how you're scaling it. You know, the target is to be within that five to seven minute range, so scale appropriately, you know, scale to where you can get it in that five to seven minute range. Once you get over that seven minute range, you kind of miss the purpose of why we did the workout. You know, if it's over seven minutes, not hard and fast, that's long and not slow, but you're, you're kind of losing the, the whole point of why we're doing it, so. The CrossFit workouts you could add, you know, would it could be your cardio day or, you know, whatever you, you feel like you need to work on or incorporate them into the different lifts into to your bodybuilding routine. But I, I honestly think that anybody can benefit from doing CrossFit. And uh, I think once you start doing it, it's, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot, a lot less monotonous. It's, it's interesting. There's you know, so many different things to do. For more information, uh, more workouts similar to this, go to bodybuilding.com.